Hello and welcome. This is Pylons with Opinions, Episode 5. I'm Fulton Logan, alongside my co-host Aaron Hodgson. Hodgy, what's up? Not too much. Just uh, just finished Easter dinner. And uh, another week's passed where we're in quarantine, so, you know, not much has changed. What about you? Yeah, no, I just finished uh, turkey dinner. Uh, I'm pretty stuffed right now. A little bit tired, got the turkey you know, comb already. You know what? You may hate... I, f- I found something that uh, I hate that you might find fucked. I hate turkey. Really? So what you I have? I can't t- stand it. What'd you have tonight? Uh, so usually we go, well, given the circumstances, we had Easter dinner at my place with just my uh, family. But yep. uh, usually we go to my grandmother's for uh, Easter dinner, you know, with like un- uncle, aunt, everybody comes for yeah, yeah. a nice, uh, nice dinner. But uh, my grandmother cooks up a nice ham for me. I, okay. I don't eat the turkey. Does everyone so else eat turkey? She, yeah, everyone else eats turkey, and people do eat the ham, but she makes extra just because I'm not a big turkey guy. Oh, so you're the, you're the but, picky uh, one. Yeah, I'm a little picky when it comes to turkey, but I do <laughs> like turkeys on like Clubhouse. I like turkey on Clubhouse, but uh, plain, I'm not a big turkey guy at all. Okay. Well, that's fair. I mean, so, I'm the same with bacon, so I mean. Oh, God, we're not getting back into that. <laughs> Maybe we'll put that up as a poll, I'll finally win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll get you on the board, because, I mean, uh, the final results for uh, Elf or Lampoons was uh, was Elf. Elf came out on top of that one. It was close. It was. It was, really it, was cl- a, it was our closest one yet. Very, that, came, that came down to a nail better. I think it might have been our most votes ever. I think we had, like, 60 or 70 votes on that. So, so far, I'm 3-0. and oh. KD yeah, with a I fork, get... pineapple on pizza, Elf over Lampoons. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta step up my game here. Yeah, we'll Some just more. we'll put on the, our next one will be uh, do you like bacon? And uh, yeah. most people say probably yes. So, uh, so the, if that'll I get you that, on the board. If, if that I lose that one, I seriously que- question humanity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, happy Easter, dude. Yes, happy Easter to you, and happy Easter to anybody listening. Uh, so what we have on the go today? First of all, um, I think you wanted to uh, say a bit on. Uh, a death in the NHL community? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I imagine everybody already heard the news, but uh, Colby Cave uh, unfortunately passed away. He was put into a medically induced coma and unfortunately uh, passed the other day. And we just want to send our deepest condolences to his friends and family as that's uh, a very sad uh, sad news to hear yeah. about. I remember waking up the other day and seeing that and I was, you know, I was instantly instantly uh you know up, just upset reading the news um it's never never it's never good to see hear about a death but uh you know to hear about a guy that was just so young and at the start of his nhl career that uh it's a really tough one to hear yeah yeah no i couldn't agree more yeah. so our, our condolences but, to uh to his family uh the uh the oilers organization and uh the rest of the nhl community as well yes yeah, absolutely Alrighty. So and, this uh, is yeah. uh yeah, you go ahead. No, I was I was just gonna let you go ahead with the intro. Oh, I was just gonna say this is episode five, and if this is your first time, congratulations. Pylons with Opinions is a weekly podcast where we debate some hot topics in sports and other aspects of life. As most of you know, sports are not really happening right now, and all of our opinions are completely opinion based as we have zero credibility. If participating in the show interests you, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PylonsPod and submit topics and questions. Reminder that it's staff parking only outside and violators will be towed. So, Haji, uh, right into it. Uh, there's not a whole lot of sports talk going on right now. Uh, I mean, I, there's still things we already covered it, things like uh, the NHL uh, maybe picking back up and having playoffs. Same with the NBA. Um, and then, obviously... MLB has proposed playing in empty spring training parks. Uh, so that's yeah. we we've covered all that. Um, but what what is new is the uh, the NFL released their 2010s All Decade Team. Yeah, I thought uh, you know not being much sports on nowadays. There's the the NFL released this. I thought it might be a good thing for us to you know chat about. Might be able to debate some. Uh, some people that got uh, added, some people that got snubbed. Um, thought it might be just a good talking point for us to chat about. 
Um, so yeah, so I can list off the at least we'll we'll start with the offense. Yep. Um, so for the All Decade team, starting with the quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and Aaron Rodgers were the two quarterbacks named. Tom Brady was and, unanimous, if I, if if I may add. Yeah, I think he was. Um, then we have wide receivers. We have Antonio Brown, Larry Fitzgerald, Calvin Johnson, and Julio Jones. Tight end, we have Rob Gronkowski and Travis Kelsey. Tackles are Jason Peters, Tyrone Smith, Joe Stanley, and Joe Thomas. Guards are Jari e- Jahari Evans. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Probably not. Uh, Logan. Yeah, probably not. Lo- Logan Mankins. Zach Martin and Marshall Yonda. Centers are Alex Mack and Marquise, Marquise Pouncey. Uh, and running backs are Frank Gore, Marshawn Lynch, LaShawn McCoy, and Adrian Peterson. Right on. So, Fulton, who do you think uh, Who do you think some snubs? Who do you like? Who do you not like? Uh, who well, would you replace? I, I mean, obviously, I 100% agree with, uh, with Brady being unanimous. I don't think that was even a question. First of all, he uh, he wouldn't have been snubbed off the list completely, but uh, it was just a question of whether he'd be unanimous or not, and uh, I agree 100% that he should be. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's only two quarterbacks on there, and I think, you know, I've seen a lot of debate online about Drew Brees should be there instead of Aaron Rodgers. That was kind of like... That was the main argument that people had in yeah. terms of the list. Um, I think he should just be on the team. I don't agree with he should be there instead of Rodgers. Because if you look at, if you go head-to-head in the 2010s with them, don't get me wrong, Breeze is a elite quarterback. Um, mm-hmm. But Rodgers has a Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP, and two M- two league MVPs in the 2010s. Yeah, Breeze has zero of all of those. A, he has a Super Bowl. Breeze in the twenty tens. I believe it was in the twenty tens. No, I don't think so. I could be wrong. You keep talking. I'll look no. that up. Uh, check that. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure like all of those accolades that Rogers had, uh, Breeze didn't have any to show. I mean, he he got. I mean, he got screwed over in the playoffs a couple That's times. Sick. Look back to last year. He should have been. Yeah. He's. I think. I think the Saints should it should have been a Patriots Saints Super Bowl last year. Um the Saints won the Super Bowl in 2010. Oh, it was 2010? Yeah. So they just made the cut. Okay. Right on. Well, uh I still think uh Rodgers with his Super Bowl MVP and as well as his two MVPs, I think he deserves to be there. Uh mm-hmm. I don't think it should be a question of if Breeze should be there over Rodgers, I think it should be Breeze should be on there as well as Rodgers. Um, yeah. And then the rest, of the, the rest of the list makes sense to me. Um, honestly, I mean, I'm a Pats fan, and I think Gronk should have been unanimous. Um, yeah, I could agree with that. I don't know. I don't know why he wasn't. Uh, and not only as a Pats fan, but... As a football fan, I think he should have been unanimous. But, I mean, I don't really have any, any, you know, criticisms about the list other than, you know, maybe adding Breeze to it. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I made that, uh, that argument the other day because, again, I was, I was also reading the, uh, the comments and seeing a lot of flack being thrown at, uh, at the fact that Rogers was on there instead of Breeze. I think that, you know, teams usually carry three – quarterback so why wouldn't the all-decade team carry three quarterbacks you know what I mean so th- in that case yeah. I think it should have been t- Brady Rodgers and Breeze and yeah. I think he made the argument well that the if you look at the 2010 to 2020 span except for the uh, most uh, passing yards in NFL history passing that mark Rodgers actually has more hardware right in that decade than Breeze does so I think that is the biggest sell point for why he was put on the team, and, I mean, also, he's just the best quarterback ever to live, but uh, we can move past <laughs> that fact. Um, the, yeah, the wide receivers, I definitely don't disagree with. Like, all of them are absolute beasts and incredible receivers. Um, I, I do agree Gronk sh- maybe should have been unanimous. Maybe it was just because he had so much injury problems that he wasn't unanimous. Right. But maybe, uh, maybe that's why. 
The only one maybe I thought about that could possibly be put on the All-Decade team was in the running backs. What about Lev Bell? Because, I mean, he yeah. had a couple of years in Pittsburgh. He had in a couple of years in Pittsburgh. I think it was two or three years where he was in, like, the top five for MVP. So, like, I'm just thinking maybe, like, maybe he could have been on that team. I don't know, actually, when he got drafted, so I don't know. He may have been draft. He may have came into the league right in the middle of the 2010s. Right. I don't know for sure. But that was somebody I thought maybe, you know, maybe could have been on that team. Um, but, I mean, as tackles, guards, and centers, I have no idea who any of those people are. So I'm <laughs> going to try to not going to try to judge those ones. No, I know. That's, that's kind of like me, too. Like, I don't look in to the game that much where I would uh, necessarily understand uh, you know like the head to heads on on tackles and guards and that um, so yeah, I don't really have sure. that much of a comment on that um, but again as far as like quarterbacks tight ends and receivers go I'm, I'm I agree with uh, with the list for the most part yeah and then uh, so we'll jump onto the defensive side now so defensive ends we have Alicius Campbell, Cameron Jordan, Julius Peppers, and J.J. Watt. I believe J.J. Watt was also unanimous folk. Yeah, he was. Uh, defensive tackles, we have Geno Atkins, Fletcher Cox, Aaron Donald, and, and Donald Kasu. Aaron Donald, again, was a unanimous vote. Uh, we have inside linebackers, we have Luke Keekley, Bobby Wagner, and Patrick Willis. Outside, Chandler Jones, Khalil Mack, Vaughn Miller, Von Miller getting the unanimous vote. Cornerbacks, Patrick Peterson, Darrell Rivas, Richard Sherman. Safeties, Eric Berry, Earl Thomas, Eric Weedle. And defensive backs, we have Chris Harris and Tyron Matthew. Yeah. Any any comments or concerns about that one? Uh, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Again, like, uh, when it comes to football, I don't really I don't really do too much digging into football. Um, so yeah, I'm no, not, I'm not going to try to comment on something that I literally like would just be speaking from my ass about, even though that's kind of what we do. Um, and this <laughs> that's like the whole sell point of our show. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, like things like JJ Watt being unanimous, like things like that. Like I agree with that. Um, and I don't really have anyone that I could just, you know, pick out their name and be like, Oh, they shouldn't be there. Uh, I'd have to look into it a whole lot more than I do to, uh, to you know either change the list or agree with it completely whatever um so i mean <laughs> looks good to me um but i i'm i'm mostly focused on the offensive side of it yeah oh yeah for me too but uh like you just said I, I i can't disagree with anybody on that list yeah most of the fact that i don't really pay attention much to the defensive side except for like jj watt is one of my favorite players in the nfl so i do watch him a lot and i'm glad to see he got a unanimous selection which i think was definitely deserved for him um but uh yeah i uh i don't disagree with that list at all good and then so uh so one thing i also brought up to you to talk about was i actually saw it on i think it was tsn's instagram and i believe it was from the athletic that somebody reported um that uh, Jazz have already begun working on the uh, the Mitchell the Donovan Mitchell Rudy Gobert relationship. Yeah, but but sources say Mitchell remains reluctant to fix what might have been broken. It doesn't appear salvageable. One source with knowledge on the situation said once again that's via the Athletic on the TSN's Instagram. That's uh, that's tough to hear on a on a sports team when you when you start throwing around uh, that a relationship is not salvageable. I mean, it doesn't really matter what sport you're talking about. Baseball, hockey, football, soccer. That's uh, Those are some pretty deep words when you start talking about relationships with your teammates and not being able to salvage them. Yeah, no question. Um, especially, like, where they're kind of the two biggest players for their team, I think that, you know, that does really say something. I mean, I, I don't really blame Mitchell. I wouldn't really be too happy if, you know, you and I got and, went to the, like a grocery store, licked all the doorknobs and shit and touched a bunch of stuff that could have been infected. Like go, go bear did with the, uh, the microphones and then came and gave it to me, spread it around the locker room. So, I mean, I understand like, um, you know, where Donovan Mitchell may be a little bit, uh, pissed off at, 
at Rudy. Like, I understand that. Um, if the season were to pick back up, it'd be interesting to see what would happen there. Because uh, obviously, yeah. if I mean, if there's no, like, if there were no moves made or, you know, if a guy wasn't sitting, like, if they were both in the lineup, uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens in terms of, you know, are they are they on the court arguing with each other on a play? Are they, you know, are they holding back, hesitating not to pass the ball to each other? Like, is it actually affecting the way that the team's performing? It'd be interesting to see, but, um, like, I mean, at the end of the day, they're professionals, so... Uh, if they're going to be on the same team, like if there's no moves made this coming off season or anything like that, I mean, I think it might just be a headline where there's no sports going on right now. So it's kind of trying to make a story out of kind of nothing. But I, it would be interesting to see what happens if, you know, n- neither of those guys change teams or whatever. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking. I think that, uh, you know, if they if they can salvage the relationship enough that they can play together, they can be professional enough that uh, it's not going to affect their on game play. Then uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about. But yeah, once that starts affecting their play, once once they can't leave it in the locker room and they bring it to the court, that's when I think you you need to look at moving. I think they got to move Gobert. I don't think they're going to move on from Mitchell. I think he's a lot better of a player than. Uh, <clears throat> then Rudy Gobert is. I think he's a better talent that you can build your team around. So I think they would. I think they would definitely trade Gobert over Mitchell. But I heard that like he was. Yeah, he was in the locker room, like touching everyone's clothes, rubbing all the mics with his hands. Yeah, and stuff he was. Like that. Like, well, I mean, I saw. I saw like the video from uh, from his press conference where uh, everyone was all up in arms. Like this was when COVID was kind of, you know, it was right before shit hit the fan. Like obviously like when it was, it was the, still kind of a joke well, for it was, everyone to make. Yeah, it was it was the day before the NBA shut down. Um Gobert, you know, went touched all these microphones and yeah, there was like reports of him like fucking around in the locker room about it and stuff, so um I mean that's just I don't really have a comment on that. Obviously it's something you shouldn't be doing. Uh with something as serious yeah, as this. Definitely. But like it was at a time where like no one really understood how serious it was. Um, but like, come on, that's just a little yeah, over no, the top. Can't be doing that. Like, yeah, I mean, if, especially even, going on, even like, even if you're, even if there's not a pandemic going around, you shouldn't be going on rubbing all over your teammates' clothes and shit. Like well, that. that's what I was about to say. Like, if there even was if no, pa- he was literally doing it to like make a joke out of it. Um, like, he was like, oh, this isn't a big deal, and I'm just going to touch all these microphones, you, and I, nothing's going to happen to me. And then, you know, days later, he's diagnosed with COVID. And it was like, like, dude, yeah. like, come on. Like, on a normal, like, in a normal world where there's no pandemic going on, are you really going and grabbing all the mics? And then going and, no. like, jokingly spreading, like, all this shit around your locker room? Like, no. So it was literally yeah, just no, like him, he, like not not taking it seriously, just trying to make a joke around the locker room, and then it turned into a big thing. So. Yeah, and yeah, like I was saying, even if it's not a pandemic fl- uh, virus that you're spreading, like, do you think I'd really want you if you had like a cold or like a, the common flu, to come be touching all over my shit? Like, I still don't want to get sick. So like, why are you coming over touching all over my pants and shit, and shit like that? <laughs> it was just a dumb infected. thing to do. And it was like, weird, this, dude. It was weird. Like, yeah, I saw that just, video, and I was just, just like, what the fuck are you doing? Also, he's, like, a quiet-ass person, and all of a sudden, COVID comes around, and he's like, oh, it can't it can't bother me. Like, it's, it can't touch me. Like, he's Shuts all the whole league down, dude. And, and then he... Yeah, and then he gets completely fucked over. Um, but, yeah, that's... That's, yeah, that's, like I said, that's some hefty words to be thrown on. That's almost like saying, I hate you to a teammate, <laughs> saying that, uh, your, your relationship is probably not salvageable, but, uh, well, that's, in, that'll be an interesting story to watch if and when the NBA season, uh, picks back up or next season, just cool. going to be interesting to see what their, uh, relationship is going to be like on the floor. Well, kind of tying in with that, like, I'm trying to think, like, to athletes that have had not so great relationships with each other, but you know, they've been able to make it work. Like I look at, I look at the golden state warriors and I I'm thinking back to like when KD was a part of golden state 
and yep. Draymond Green would just chew him out on the floor. Like, there'd be, like, I don't know, they'd fuck up a play. Uh, Steve Kerr would call a timeout, and on their way to the bench, like, Draymond Green would just be giving Kevin Durant an earful. And then there'd be, like, sideline footage during the timeout, and Draymond's just giving it to KD, and KD's, like, just not having any of that shit. So, like, I'm I'm trying to think, and, I mean, you know, that team won a championship, mm. you know, so obviously I think there is some times where, like, guys don't necessarily get along, even in, even in the locker room. Uh, but they can put that shit aside when it comes to, you know, at the end of the day that you just want to go out and win as many games as you can. So, um, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, you gotta, you gotta be mature about it and you gotta figure out, you know, where your relationship off the, off the floor, off the ice or off the field, you know, that, that changes to on the, you know, on the field relationship. And those are almost two completely separate things. And the thing is, when you have somebody that you're not the biggest fan of. And the thing is like. You, if you're Utah, you don't want to trade Mitchell, but you also don't want to trade Gobert. So, like... No. So, you kind of... You know, to have something like this, if it's impacting your team, obviously you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to make a move, um, you know, to try and, you know, keep it professional on the court and uh, have, like, a good team chemistry. But it's just kind of a shitty situation where, like, you don't want to get rid of e- either one of those players. No, not at all. I mean, you're getting rid of uh, one of the bright futures of the NBA in Donovan Mitchell, or you're getting rid of a proven defensive juggernaut who's won Defensive Player of the Year awards in Rudy Gobert. So, I mean, it's kind of like every, each each path has its um, has its downsides. But I think I think personally, if you're going to trade either one of them, I think I would trade Gobert. I think that has the I think trading Mitchell has the worst downside no they, they won't uh, they won't get rid of Mitchell I mean he's just he's just too good um yeah no I I agree um I think it's going to be something that again is just going to be like you know shit that headline you know they're just trying to make headlines well there's nothing going on right now because um, mm-hmm. I mean you see that happening around the whole league like even the NHL and the NBA aren't necessarily like giving up on their seasons but they're kind of talking as if it's just like it's just like oh when this happens this is gonna happen it's not there's never an if yeah and i mean there's like the fact that everyone's just trying to make headlines right now yeah and yeah the the sports leagues being optimistic on when they're going to start up again i think if you look at even where we're at nova scotia that by the yeah by the way we live in nova scotia that uh we're not the government's not even looking at opening things back up like conversations back up until june at the earliest at the earliest you look how small we are as a population and then look at somewhere and then look at the larger cities in the states like i can't i can't even think start to think that they're looking at june like they got to be looking at even further with the amount of people that they have yeah i mean i don't even know like how it's going to be done because you know they're saying oh we just won't allow fans to come into the seats um well, players are still people exactly exactly like the players are out there on the field and or the court or the ice whatever and you know there's at least 10 of them depending on the sport there's at least 10 of them out there all at once so basically it would just be kind of one of those things where um you know i know the wwe's kept their shit going but they're they're facing a lot of backlash for that because i think uh it was like this week there was a report that someone test positive so like they were the only like kind of like sport that was still going on them and like ufc but i think everything's just kind of everyone's kind of realizing now you know just because you play a sport doesn't doesn't mean you're invincible yeah i i saw the other day that the ufc actually canceled their latest upcoming uh upcoming pay-per-view um officially canceled i heard also something that uh Dana White was going to se- send all of his fighters to, like, an island and then have them fight at this island so <laughs> they could be completely quarantined and just train a fight, which would be kind of entertaining if you just put a camera on for 24 hours. Could you imagine that? Like, if you had, like, Connor McDavid and what's the other... Nate Diaz? Did you just say Connor 24 McDavid? 24 hours. Yeah, or Connor McDavid, Jesus. Oh, my God. Sorry, today's been a long day. Um, <laughs> Connor, Connor McGregor. I was going to say, that's Nate. a headline I haven't seen yet. Connor McDavid 
takes his off-season uh, training to the next level and joins the UFC. Yeah, nobody touches him on the ice because he'll put them in a fucking arm. <laughs> they do. I mean, like um, to but, your point, that would be entertaining to watch. Conor McDavid joining the UFC, start training, then just throw him in the ring against McGregor. Just be like, here you go. That would be interesting to watch, to say the least. But uh, I don't think it'd be entertaining. I think it wouldn't it might last. Be long. Interesting. Yeah. It definitely would not last long. Um, but yeah, what I meant was if you if you put like a camera on like Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz, or even just Conor McGregor for twenty four hours on this island, how entertaining would that be? Oh, I'd watch it. You just watch Quentin Rampage Jackson rip more doors off walls. <laughs> I mean, like right now, as of now, I'm just watching reruns of like, you know, big games and uh, big. Uh, like I watched the 2011 Masters, the final round yesterday. And to be oh, to yeah. be honest with you, dude, like at first when all the sports got canceled, I was like, holy fuck, like this is gonna suck. What am I gonna watch? But with all these, uh, with like Sportsnet showing Blue Jays reruns and Raptors reruns from the playoffs and that, like, you're getting top quality entertainment if you're a sports fan. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I was watching when I was eating supper. We were watching uh, last year when Tiger won the uh, the Masters, and I mean that was incredible to watch. Just his comeback in that uh, that tournament was insane. I mean that was and one of the better I mean, Masters I've ever seen. Oh for sure, and I mean even though it's a year old or some of the stuff maybe like two or three years old and it's i think it's still entertaining to watch no i i 100 percent agree um i watched yeah what did i say 2011 last night was that mike weir's tournament no it was uh his last name is schwartzel is it jeff schwartzel i don't know okay <laughs> but it was a really entertaining masters like jason day uh, Tiger Woods, and oh, there was one other guy. They were all like right down to the wire, and uh, I think Schwartz will won with like a twelve under, or a thirteen under, and like there was like two or three guys right behind him that were all twelve under, or eleven under, just one stroke back, and it was mm-hmm. such a good finish because like at first I was following Day because Day was making like a huge push, and Tiger finished really strong, and. Uh, and it was like watching it for the first time because, like, I don't remember back 2011 what happened. And then Schwartzel was just coming out of nowhere. And he was, uh, like, on the on the 18th, it was like, he's coming up on the 18th onto a putt. And the, uh, the commentator was like, Schwartzel, he has two putts to win the Masters. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't even know this guy was in the running for it. <laughs> and then he... He puts in on like a, a fucking long ass birdie putt. It was probably like thirty feet when he had two putts to do it, and that's so anticlimactic. Like, did you? Uh, what was the uh, the tournament a couple of years ago that Brooks Kepka won? Uh, like the all four majors that he won. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, I was watching. I think he won like the. I think he won like the U.S. Open. Uh, play? Did he win the players? I don't know. He don't know. he went on a tear for a little bit, um, but there was one that he won early on in the season where he uh, he put in when his like the his the his partner uh, still had to putt and mm-hmm. uh, Kepka had like a like I don't even know a foot. It was like a a foot for a birdie or par or whatever. It was for the Masters. And he tapped in before his uh, before his partner went. Mm-hmm. And, like, as he was walking up to the ball, like, the whole crowd was like, no, 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 don't tap that in. Because then, like, he'd tap it in, everyone would go crazy. But then there was still this guy who had no chance at winning, had to finish out his round. And I was like, I remember watching it, and I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And then he taps in, and everyone goes crazy. And then he just looks up, and he starts laughing because he realizes, oh, shit, I should have just marked my ball waited for my partner to finish and then come tap in and then we could have this whole celebration. And it was just kind of like that when Schwartzel won. Like, it was a really good putt, so everyone went crazy. But mm-hmm. uh, at the same time, it was like, you, you want to be the last one on the green when you, win, when you win a major. Yeah. You want to let your partner finish and then you tap in and then, you know, you can kind of have that longer celebration. 
So it's just kind of funny to watch like him make it, still have to watch his partner finish out. Everyone kind of claps for him, and then wait till they, he leaves the green, and then you know it's the guy who actually won getting cheered on. So it's like yeah, kind of anticlimactic, but it's again, it's still fun. Yeah, and I mean, speaking of watching golf, where you don't know where anybody came, that a certain person came from. I was watching this thing. I think it was on YouTube. Um, it was about one of it was about a U.S. Open. I want to say it was two thousand eight, but I might be wrong. I'm probably wrong about the date. Um, it was when Tiger was going through like his bad knee problems, like really bad knee problems. Right. And he was supposed to have surgery on his knee, but he held off. I think he got the surgery, and they recommended that he didn't play in the U.S. Open. And he was like, nah, screw that. I'm playing in the U.S. Open. Like, this is my tournament I'm playing. Um, and he ended up, like, the first round, he's really struggling. Uh, and I think it was the second round. He swung. He, like, he just drive sprayed off into the woods and landed on a cart path. And he took his shot fr uh, from the cart path, and like you could, and his caddy was like, "Oh, you can just hear his knee crunch, right?" Yeah. And like his caddy was like, "All right, like I think it might be time to, you know, call this uh, call this tournament to go home." And he actually he said he told his caddy, "Fuck you, I'm finishing this." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he ended up shooting an absolute beauty of a shot on the green, but uh, just going to where somebody that nobody knew about was this guy named Rocco Mediate. Um, he wasn't even a ranked player, I don't think. Or he was, like, in the triple digits if he was ranked. Um, but he ended up having a crazy tournament, right? And he was at the top of the leaderboard all week long. And, uh, like, people didn't even believe he was an actual golfer, right? He, he, was, he was just one of those guys that, like, he has his card. You know, he's just there for fun, just to enjoy himself, like, enjoy the moment. Maybe play until Saturday. If not, oh well, we'll pack it in. You know, that kind of yeah. person on the PGA Tour. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he ended up having like a monster tournament. He's at the top of the leaderboard. And when Tiger went on his heat streak, it ended up being him and Tiger at the end of Sunday tied. Hmm. So they had to come back on Monday and play a bunch of playoff holes. And it was just incredible watch I have watching, you know, Tiger climb the leaderboards from I think he was like plus three. All the like to, I think it was minus three or minus four. It wasn't that far of a, a climb, but I mean the U.S. is a very difficult. U.S. Open is very difficult course. Yeah. But uh, you know, just watching him climb and then them battle it out in the playoff holes, it was just it was incredible to watch. And I mean, you wouldn't think golf has very good highlights, but you know, watching those kind of stories is actually really cool. Dude, I put it up there with some of the sports like hockey and football. Well, golf, yeah, if you, uh, the thing, like, a lot of people don't like golf because either they don't golf or, you know, it's it's a slower game, and if you don't really know what's going on, that can definitely make it super slow. Um, but golf, man, like, watching the majors on TV, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's the Masters or the U.S. Open or, uh, I, I mean, dude, any major, when it gets to Sunday is probably it's definitely up there in my top three like favorite championships to watch oh yeah like i I probably won't watch it thursday friday might watch some of it saturday but like when the masters is on or like the players or like one of those majors is on and it's sunday i'll definitely sit down and watch it from like from morning to end yeah like, no. it's just exciting as soon as it comes on thursday i'm right into it and i mean i've, I've entered into masters pools a couple like the past couple of years um, you know, just get a group of friends and I don't even, yeah, we put money on it. Um, but we do a, a snake draft for it and you oh, know, you yeah. get like four golfers. So you're following them all weekend and it's so fun. Cause right as soon as Thursday yeah. starts, like if they have a good round on Thursday, like you're getting pretty excited, leads it into the weekend and either they suck and you know, they they finish five over whatever it is. Or they're right there on Sunday, and it gets competitive, and it's super fun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, last year, I remember I, I picked Tiger before the master started, and if I would have put money on him, well, I obviously would have won some money. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, when the Masters comes back up, I'll definitely be taking part in some of those betting because, I mean, I just I, – I remember being a kid. Do you ever, were you one of those kids that, like, if your dad was watching golf, you couldn't fucking stand it? 
but like now I could sit there and watch it for hours on <laughs> it doesn't even bother me. Like I was when I was a kid I could not stand watching golf. And now I can just sit there and watch. I think it might just because I'm getting older. But I just a kid I was just so like I was so restless watching it because it was just so slow. Well golf used to piss me off. Like I uh I used to like watching it. Like my dad would have it on on the weekends. So I sit down and watch it with him, and, like, I didn't understand what was going on, so he kind of, like, would start to explain it to me. But then, like, I got into golf when I was really young. Like, I think I, f- I went for my first round when I was, like, seven. Mm-hmm. And holy fuck, dude. I had no patience for it when I started out. Like, if the ball didn't go straight, I was freaking out. I was like, what the fuck? I didn't, I didn't try to hit it there. It just went there on its own. It'd be, like, shank it into the woods. Or if there was, like, a like a 400 yard par five i'd step up and there'd be like one sand trap on the whole entire hole and of course i've hit it in the sand trap and i'd be all pissed off <laughs> about it so like then i'd see golf on tv and just be like nah like i don't even like this game like fuck this game even to this day man like i'll hit a bad shot i'll be like fucking hate golf but like but now yeah i could sit down from thursday to sunday not even move from my couch and just watch all the all the majors yeah yeah i mean i still do that now when i take a shot in golf uh i have this was going to be my summer to work on golf and actually get good at the game but of course when i want to do that a fucking pandemic hits and now i can't even get good at it hey man if you're an athlete golf is probably like the sport right now that you're most hopeful for yeah because it's like one of those games you can go and play by yourself so if exactly like that's that's kind of the sport where we might actually get lucky and get some uh some sports over the summer or even something like say like me and my dad can go out for that because i mean we're, we're living together so i mean if i get corona he got corona <laughs> and, vi- and vice versa <laughs> and vice and vice versa fair enough so i so i mean hopefully because i i remember i thought i heard that in florida they've kept the golf courses open um i don't know if that's still the case or if that was actually true no i think they close those down now but uh, I, think I mean that would be pretty. Now. That would be pretty clutch if, like, come June, that they deem golf courses an essential service <laughs> just so we can go golfing. Just to and get I mean, a break. You can still you can you can stay six feet apart from each other when you're golfing. And you could also go up by yourself too. If they say solo rounds, like that's fine. I'll go, I'll go play myself. solo round. I'll just go work. I'll just go work on my game. And by the time, you know, quarantine's over and this this uh, virus has passed over. I'll be the best fucking golfer around. Dude, the, here's what I'm not going to do ever again. And that's stand even remotely close to in front of one of your golf shots. After after you almost took my shins off that oh one day. Oh my god. I will oh, never I, I will forgot about that. I will be standing probably 20 feet back <laughs> of any of your shots for the rest of my life, even putts. <laughs> this is All right. Haji Haji yeah, you you tell it because you had a you had a view of how you almost <laughs> literally killed me. Okay, but you you say it like it's my fault, but it's it, it's a fifty fifty here. So what happened was we're playing a nice little golf course by the name of Indian Lake. Nice I was banking course. on a lot of shit going right. That's for sure. So yeah, that part's and, on me. Yeah, that's why I said. Uh, well, I'll 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 give you sixty forty. It was sixty my fault, forty yours. So. <laughs> So I have this, I have a nice line at the green. I pull out the pitching wedge, trying to get some air on the ball, drop it right on, right on the green. Fulton, whose ball is directly in my path forward to the green, is standing, is standing right beside his ball. (laughs) And I say, I say, yo, Fulton, (laughs) heads up. (laughs) He goes, and he sees what club I have in my hand and goes, nah, I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'll pay attention. (laughs) So I take a deep breath, pause for a second, say, okay. So I line up, get my shot ready to go. I'm lined up, focusing. I'm trying to focus on my shot, but all I can focus on is the fact that uh, Fulton is directly in my line. (laughs) He's not, or sorry, he's not directly in my line, but the line he is in is between me and the ball, and I have to go over him. (laughs) And I'm shooting. I'm shooting on a downhill lie, and he's fr- like he's below my feet. I do want to add though. I do want to add that there was, like, a hill in the mid- like it was a dog leg, dog leg left, and there was like a big hill between your ball, 
and the green. So and the you, green, you yes. yeah, so you were hitting like a like a nine iron or a pitching wedge, trying to chip it over that hill. I had a pitching wedge. I know that for a fact. Yeah. I, pitch- I remember this like it was yesterday. But you had hit it over the hill. And I was at like the bottom yeah. of the hill, curled up in a ball, waiting for you to hit yeah. your shot. He was, yeah, I was on the right side of the fairway, like right on the edge, of, <laughs> in, like right on the edge, almost in the rough. And Fulton was on the left side of the fairway. I think he may have been in the rough. Yeah, I was. But he was right on, he was right on the lip of where the hill started. And he was like bent over, like somewhat hiding behind his bag, but not really at the same time. So I line up and Daggle behind me said something and it just threw me right off, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to line up and I'm just in my head. I'm like, for the love of God, do not hit this at him. Do not hit this at him. I take a nice hefty swing at this ball. Where does it do? I go, I look straight up in the air to see where it is. It's not there. And I look down. Well, I send an absolute piss missile right across, right, a screamer right across the grass. Like this was a worm burner. (laughs) Aimed, aimed directly right at Fulton's shins. <laughs> and I'm telling you, this this ball, like, I made clean contact with this ball, and it was hit hard. Fulton jumps in the air, and I I kid you not, a millisecond later, I would have broken his shin. Yeah. And he, he stands up, he's like, what the fuck? I'm like, I told you not to stand there. <laughs> Dude, my, la- my life flashed before my eyes. I was like, because I was like... I was, like, kind of curled up in a ball, and I was like, oh, you know, like, Hodgie's just going to take a nice, easy little chip here. It'll go over the hill, and then I'll hit my ball. And uh, But, of course, I had to watch. Like, I wasn't going to turn my back to you. Oh, my God. And that, you imagine next thing I know, you hit that ball so hard. I don't even hit, like, I don't even hit my seven iron that hard. And you're using a pitching wedge. And this thing was like, I could hear it. I could hear it. Like, you know, when a ball like is cutting through the air and all you hear is. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, can... holy fuck. And so all <laughs> I did was close my eyes and jump. And I, I mean, fuck, I, I probably have some hairs taken off my leg from that. That's day. what I was about to say. I think I might have taken a couple of hairs off of your leg. But, oh, because man. I fuck, I made clean contact. That was an absolute warm burner piss missile. I sent right at your shit. Like, <laughs> Speaking of golf stories, I'll let you tell this one. Remember when we were golfing, it was you, me, Jordan, and Daggle. And Daggle lined up at the par three. And he used one of his two eight irons to go over the pond. (laughs) (laughs) I'll let let you take it from there. All right, so we're on the tee box. And keep in mind, like, our friend Daggle is... He's really fun to go golfing with. And, like... He's not he's not terrible at it. He's not the best at it. We'll say that. He, he wasn't having a good day when we when this story happened, but uh so yeah, we line up. It's like what hole was it? We're we're coming up on the uh, end. It was definitely on the back nine. Yeah, it was probably like probably like 15. Yeah, that's probably safe to say. And um <laughs> so Daggle comes up not having a great day on the score sheet. And uh yeah, he lines up with he's got <laughs> Takes out his eight iron on his par three. Meanwhile, one I have of my, two. I, <laughs> I have my pitching hand, a pitching wedge in my hands. Dag was like, oh, "I'll probably use an eight. And I was like, "Yeah, buddy, go for it." Keep and... in mind, his clubs are old as sin. <laughs> they, they might as well have been wooden. And so he stands up on the tee box, and I'm just kind of looking down at the scorecard, like minding my own business. And so Daggle Daggle takes his shot, his shot. And when I say I've never heard a ball sound like this off a club face, (laughs) I mean that. Like, all I heard was, ping! And I was like, I was like, what the, it's not supposed to sound like that. And I look look up, (laughs) and there's a pond directly in front of the tee box. And all I see is, splash! And I was like, what the fuck? Daggle turns around. And he's holding half his eight, his eight iron in his hands. The thing just snapped <laughs> off right in half. The ping we heard was half the eight iron floating off the club, right and flying into the pond. And <laughs> Daggle starts laughing his ass off. I am hunched over on the tee box. And it was like a busy day on the golf course. Like the people behind us were on the, the green and we were trying to like kind of pick up our pace. 
I was hunched over for five minutes on the tee box, laughing my ass off. And Daggle, the best part I found was when Daggle goes back to his bag, and he was like, it's fine, though, because I have two eight irons. I was like, <laughs> you don't... You were asking me for my sandwich two holes back, and you're telling me you have two eight irons? Holy fuck, dude! That was probably one of the that was probably one of the uh, weirdest golf rounds I've ever had in my life. From almost dying was, to Daggle ripping one of his clubs in half on a normal shot, to having two eight irons and no sandwich. No, no, that wasn't the same round. That was two different rounds. It was same summer, uh, and that's enough. Same summer, yeah, same summer. But uh, yeah, it was it was part three. It was at Penn Hills. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah, I remember when he you remember because it, it was and it was I think it was just wasn't it just the head? I think it was just the head of the iron. It was no, it was like half the flying sh- half, half the shaft went with it. <laughs> oh, okay, but I well yeah because all you heard was the ping and we're like what? I remember I looked at you and Jordan. I was like what the fuck <laughs> like, what was the that fuck? sound? <laughs> And then you look in the air, you you don't see the ball, so you look in the air to see if you can find the ball, and you just see a club hurtling, for, <laughs> half the club hurtling for the pond, and all you hear is a big bloosh, and you look over, and you look at Daggle, and he turns around, and he's just holding the shaft in front of him, looking at the broken part. Holy shit. I remember, yeah, you were you were bent over laughing. I was on my back on the <laughs> tee box, like laying down, and my stomach hurt so bad. I was laughing so hard. And then, yeah, the funniest part was one when Dago goes, "It's okay, guys. I have a second eight on it." <laughs> and two, he put the ball within like five feet of the hole. <laughs> like he snapped the club, but put it within five feet of the hole. Oh fuck. That was also the round. That was the same round that Jordan decided to jump in the fucking golf cart when the geese were all over the fairway, and go nuts trying to scare them <laughs> off. Do you remember that? Yeah. He jumped in. He jumps in the golf cart with an iron in his hand, and he just starts driving towards the middle of the fairway <laughs> full speed, and starts screaming at these geese. <laughs> it looked like he was like herding a, a corral or crowling a herd or whatever the fuck it's called <laughs> and these geese were just flying all over the place oh my god that's that's why golf is like the best summer activity to me it's just you get the best stories from there's it. there's not a whole lot of sports you can drink while you play Mm-mm. that's why like a couple of years down the road i want to start doing like a annual golf like golf getaway with a couple guys i think that would be so much fun oh yeah dude yeah like rent a cabin for like a weekend or so, play a bunch of rounds, come back, just get loaded, have a great time <laughs> with the guys, come back with some unbelievable stories. It'd be like a grown man's cavy kind of thing. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm thinking. Once I get too mature for cavy, which is probably coming up sooner than I think it is. You're hovering over um, it. Yeah. We're getting right to the point of, it's kind of creepy for me to be there. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, yeah. As soon as we get to that point. I think it's time to start a annual golf golf vacation. I'm in. I mean, again, I though, I'm... but, like, think about these two stories we just told about us on the golf course. We were sober for both of them. Yeah. I, st- I, stood, I, st- I stood, like, 40 yards away from your screamer of a, of a pitch. Completely 40 yards sober. away from certain death. Yeah. From... <laughs> yeah. And I was completely sober to tell the tale. Yeah. Do you so, imagine if you were buzzed or in the bag when that happened? Oh, I, no. I'd, I'd be dead. I wouldn't be here telling you the story. You'd have to tell it for me. It's yeah, a legacy pull, where if pull. I die that way, like, you know what? That'd be fucking hilarious. Um, but, yeah, you would definitely be the one telling the story for the rest of forever. Yeah, full. Fulton, God rest his soul, taken out with a pitching wedge with an absolute war, war burner. It'd be like an open casket at the funeral, and it's just like the golf ball just like still lodged in my skull. <laughs> and you, just, you, you, middle of the funeral, you go up with a sharpie and you just sign it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be too funny. <laughs> um, yeah. One fun. question That's... I had for you. Yeah. Um. It's kind of off the sports topic. Maybe jump off that. Maybe jump into some... Yeah, that's fine. Some everyday topics. Was um, ranking your top five snack foods. We were told people like our top... We were told people like our top fives. Our top fives? Uh, Snack food. Yeah, maybe we keep going with that. Top five snack foods. 
that's tough. Um, okay. Um, well, when I'm on a student budget, I don't really get a whole lot of money for snacks necessarily. Yeah, that's fair. After paying for all like the essentials, like all the meal shit. Um, and I think also with snack foods, like snack foods can vary. Like I consider like a sandwich at like four o'clock a snack, like a pre, a pre dinner snack. But like, yeah, usually what I'll, that. what I'll snack on, like, especially if I'm like drunk and I come home from the bar, um, things that I would like go for is like, like popcorn chips Ooh, i didn't even think of that one that's a good one didn't think it's popcorn as a snack i i knew it was a snack but it for some reason it just wasn't coming to my mind all right so i go like popcorn uh chips uh you ever had honey roasted peanuts oh yes oh, yeah my those God. are those things those are, are big those time. Are things are those are like cocaine <laughs> well not not actually though, but what I meant it what I meant was that they're just addictive. Let's just move on from that. <laughs> okay, so that's three. Um four uh craft dinner, obviously everyone knows what the fuck craft dinner is, but KD cups. Like just those like small, like snackable cups that you just put some water in and yeah, you put those in the fucking microwave. So those, those, oh my God, those hit different at like 2 a.m. when you're hammered. If you have a KD cup, man, it brings you right back to life. Okay. And then to be honest, dude, I love to just eat a bowl of cereal. <laughs> be like, yeah, I can get down. 11 that. o'clock. Be like, I'm about to go to bed. I might just crush a bowl of Cheerios real quick. Yeah. Um, so was that five? I didn't even count. <laughs> yeah, it was five. Okay. Um, do you want to try to rank them? Not really. <laughs> All right. Because I can't. I can't. Because it, it depends on the mood I'm in. Yeah, that's fair. Like, I'm not that's just like, fair. oh, I, I want to have a snack right now. So let's see. Am I in Am I in the mood for my number four or my number two? Like, it's just like, yeah. if I open the cupboard, sometimes I'll see, like, some cereal. And then sometimes I'll see, like, um, like a KD cup. And it can, mm-hmm. it can vary which one I want. So I'm not going to rank them. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get what you're putting down there. That's definitely a viable reason not to rank them. I think my top five would have to be chips definitely on there. Um, I'm going to throw popcorn up there because I love, I love just having popcorn. Honey roasted peanuts, those are definitely three. Um, let's see, what else is there? Uh, da, 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 da. Honorable mention, goldfish. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a good one. Fuck, what's another one? I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, granola bars. I definitely like just to snack <laughs> on those. Okay. Um, and like you said, a sandwich, I would consider a snack. Um, but I wouldn't go too crazy with a sandwich for a snack. Like if I'm just making a quick sandwich, like if I'm... It's a pb and if Yeah, if I'm in bed... And, you know, I wake up and I'm like, all right, I'm kind of hungry. Like, I just need something quick. Or it's like it's getting close to dinner, but not quite that time. And I'm hungry. I'm, I'm whipping up a, pe- a peanut butter sandwich. Um, but here's a weird thing I do with peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, fuck. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if you'll find this weird or if you'll find it normal. Every time I make a peanut butter sandwich, I have to take a spoonful of peanut butter and just eat the spoonful of peanut butter by itself. Oh, no, that's Is not that weird? weird. No, that's not weird because I used to do that, too, when I was like, six yeah that's a, i that came from me when i was a kid because i when i was a kid i used to just dummy peanut butter peanut butter jam sandwiches like and my dad used to make these things called a super shaggy sandwich okay <laughs> which was peanut butter on peanut butter like one peanut butter and jam sandwich and then another peanut butter and jam sandwich on top of it and it was like two Damn. sandwiches into one and i used to dummy those as a kid it was probably the reason i was so fucking fat as a kid <laughs> but uh or I wasn't fat, but I was a I was a chunky child. That was probably why. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I even, even I think it came from my childhood. I just used to dummy peanut butter all twenty four seven. I mean, I mean now, now it's kind of weird. You think scooping out peanut butter and then just licking it? Yeah, kind of. Like it was weird it's, when it's, I was a kid, dude. Like it's not it's not really it's not really a food. 
It's just a it's a, just a quick snack. Just a quick scoop of peanut butter. <laughs> I don't think it's out. I mean, it might be weird. I I I I might be in denial of that, but I mean, I don't know. It's it's kind of one of those things where like, like I said, like I used to do that too when I was like six, but then I was kind of like, I'm then not. I'm up. just not going to do this anymore. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's fair. And maybe I haven't really just, seen yeah, it. Old, maybe, maybe old habits die hard. Maybe I need to just grow up, but you never know. <laughs> maybe there's pe- other people that do it. I think there... Well, I definitely think there's other people that do it. Because I remember, like, when I was a kid and I used to do that stuff, like, so did my friends. But, like, recently, I haven't I haven't seen that in, like, a long time. Well, you go take a scoop of peanut butter out after this and tell me how good it is. I'm not going to do that, I don't think. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, that's uh, that's all I really had to ask you. So I came up with that one. I thought that might have been a good one to talk about. <laughs> well, I guess I can... Uh, Katie underscore King submitted, what is the best post-downtown snack? And this... I'm not going to say snack. Oof. I'm just going to say, like, what's what's your favorite thing, either while you're downtown, like, and you're about to head home? What What's your, like, favorite thing to grab? Or once you get home, if you didn't eat, and you get home, and that's when you eat. Like, what well, would you what would you pick? Nine times out of ten, if I go home without grabbing a snack downtown, I'm not gonna eat. I'm probably just gonna pass out. Okay. Um. So, I would say I've the last couple times we were going downtown before the pandemic happened. I was getting Meza, which was really good. I mean, that slapped a different kind of way. Does it? <laughs> but, but. If I, my go-to would be a smokes poutinery, and I'm just grabbing a classic poutine. That's a big play. That is just, oh, that's just, that's, that's a clutch. Especially when maybe you're not feeling so great, you're starting to see doubles. You, you throw a mound of gravy, cheese curds, and fries into your stomach. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a-okay for the taxi ride home. That's like, I remember the only time we've gone to that place together. Actually, no, we've been there a couple times together. But the first time we were there, um, I was like, you know, it's the end of the night. We were feeling pretty good. And I remember, remember when I put my debit card in the chip? And the shit. Oh my God, I remember that (laughs) cluster. Oh my Lord. So I was having some tough times with my uh, debit card a few months ago. And we were, so we're downtown, it's the end of the night. I come up to the the cashier at, uh, yeah, it was at Smokes Poutinery and order my shit and there's a whole lot of people behind me and i was like yeah debit he was like okay so i put my chip in the bottom and uh when i say i was having a rough time with my card it was the chip apparently there was something fucked up with it so i put my chip in the bottom and immediately it declined like i didn't type in my my pin or anything and i was like "Holy, how much did i spend tonight but i knew i had like enough and I, was, I remember this. <laughs> so I take it out and I put it back in. And the cashier is like, he just knows I'm like drunk. And he looks at me and he was like, it's still not working. And I was like, hang on. Take it back out. <laughs> shove it back in. Didn't work. This he was guy like, was yeah, fucking... no. He was like, I don't think it's going to work. And I was like, no, it's going to work. <laughs> Took it out. Wiped it on my shirt. And then I put it back in. And then he was like, yeah, it's still not working. And I guess that time I clued in and I looked over at you and I was like, hey, Haji, you you, uh, you got this for me? That was after I watched you fucking try to fiddle and fondle the fucking ATM machine. Like, you should have taken it to dinner first before <laughs> you did what you did to it. Jesus Christ. It was like, I'm, I'm sitting there eating my poutine and I look over and Fulton is just fucking in and out this fucking ATM with his ATM, his credit card. And I'm like, holy shit, what is he doing? And he, he stops for a second, takes a deep breath, looks at me and goes, Hodge, you got this for me? I was like, what? I was like, I think, I think you're doing just fine, buddy. I don't think you need my help with anything over there. So, yeah, t- and look at my wallet. Uh, do you guys did- take sport check gift cards? <laughs> got a couple of those what? you're going to have. <laughs> I was and just then, going through yeah. my wallet. I was like, can I pay with anything else but my debit card? <laughs> So, yeah, then I ended up having to pay for him. Then the next time we were there, do you remember the fucking mountain of poutine that guy gave me? Yeah, dude. That was like a serving f- for a family. Yeah, I said, can I get the regular size poutine? <laughs> he goes, 
I was like, what are your size? He goes, regular and large. I was like, can I just get a regular, please? He go, or sorry, no. He said, we have regular and small. I was like, can I get a regular? This dickhead rang me up for a large. <laughs> Knowing he, he upsailed me. He did. He upsailed me. So then he goes, regular, and he sit, hands it to me, and it is literally the width of my, like, it was so wide. Like, yeah, no. I'd say it was like a foot, it was like a foot long, like a subway foot long size length <laughs> of the box. And it is full to the tip, and I'm like, I look at him, and he goes, enjoy. I was like, yeah, thanks, I'll enjoy <laughs> puking my guts I'll enjoy up this for the next this. two weeks. I was like, you can, like, you could legit feed a family of four out of this. <laughs> And it cost me twenty three dollars. Oh, <laughs> like, geez. holy shit! I was like, holy shit! But yeah, the, I mean, that's that's my go to snack. But they dick me over every time I go there. Uh, that's poutine's definitely a big play. I mean, I, honestly, I just like a slice of pizza. You can't go wrong with a slice of pizza because it's like it's like enough when you're drunk after downtown and you just grab a slice yeah. of pizza, like. First of all, when you're eating it, it's like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. But then when yeah. you're finished it, you're like, yeah, no, I don't. I'm full. Let's go home. Oh. I definitely think it, from Pizza Downtown, I think Sicilian is better. What's the other one? Is it Pizza Girls? Is that the other one? Across the road? Yeah. That's always playing music. Okay. I th- yeah, I I would definitely take Sicilian over Pizza Girls. I remember having Pizza Girls a couple times. I wasn't a huge fan of it, but yeah, I I think Sicilians. If you're gonna go pizza, you gotta go for Sicilians. I always just go to Sicilians because it's bumping. True. Yeah, it's, there's always people there. Um, yeah. Uh, so I want to change up how we do the questions this week. Okay. Because rather than us, uh, going through them together. I think we should get more off the sp- on the spot answers, and uh, you pick you pick a couple to ask me. I'll pick a couple to ask you. Sounds so good. So rather than us both answering the question, let's. Uh, we can still both answer it if you really want to, but. Just, yeah, we can do that. All right. We can. I mean, we'll just put each the other one on the spot, and the other one just knows how they're going to answer it. Yeah. All right, you first. So, oh, me first. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to go with a question from Julia K. McDonald. Okay. What sports guy would you not want to date your sister? Gronk. Oh, we're, oh you're going with, like, a legitimate sports, like, a guy in sports. I, I thought we were going to go, like, like a, just a sport category. Like a hockey guy or a football guy. All right. <laughs> putting down. No, I think, I don't think I'd want Gronk dating my sister. <laughs> You wouldn't want a Patriots guy would not want Gronk dating his sister. Okay. Well, like I like the dude. I th- I want to be like best friends with him, but I don't know if I'd want to be brothers in law. That's fair. That's fair. I, uh, I, I get that. I mean, he's married, so like I think anyway. Jesus, who tied down that Bronco? <laughs> Sorry, wrong wrong team. Uh yeah. Um yeah no I think I don't think I'd want Gronk dating my sister. I don't think that's how I'd want to be like close with him. You know. That's I want to be point. like his that's... his like friend. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's definitely a good point. Um, that's that's how I interpreted the question. I think I think she meant like pick a dude. And... Um. Well, I didn't have a dude. I just was just gonna say any soccer, so, any like big time soccer player. <laughs> okay. Definitely don't want them dating my sister. <laughs> The egos, egos are too big. Yeah, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna get free tickets, you don't want it to be to soccer. No, yeah, get me. That's like the one sport we don't really watch. Yeah, I, I, I let a hockey, I'd let a hockey player date my sister. They're good guys. They're nice. They're good guys to be around. Good to girls. I'd I'd definitely take a hockey guy. All right, fair. Um. So first, before we continue, I just, uh, I told Keeler I'd answer his his questions. So this one's submitted by Brandon Keeler. Uh, who do who do you have as your NBA MVP? Uh, Giannis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not, I think that one's undebatable. Maybe LeBron. Maybe he's close. I'd say he's a close second, but I think Giannis is running away with. I think Giannis was too. Running away with it. I think. Uh, I think the Lakers would fare better without LeBron than the Bucks would would without uh, Giannis. Oh yeah. 
One hundred percent. Um, and I mean, you, you I mean, it kind of went to show last year in the playoffs against the Raptors. I mean, the Raptors were on a tear once they beat Philly, but um, it's sh- like, imagine that series without Giannis. That would have been. A, I think. I think it would have been, been a, a sweep. sweep. Yeah. Um, and I don't even think the Bucks would have gotten as far without him. They wouldn't have had home no. court for sure. No, they wouldn't have finished. They finished first, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. They I had, don't even think. Yeah, they. Had I think they court. would have been a. I think they would have been a bottom seed in the East. I think they would have made the playoffs, but I don't think they would have been higher than fifth or sixth. Because they are like a pretty good team without Giannis. Um, they do still have some good players like Middleton and uh, Brogdon. And, yeah, um, but not enough to like to be like a, an elite team. No, but Giannis, not, not be... Giannis t- makes them elite. Oh yeah, well I mean if I was seven feet tall and could dunk on everybody and run like a point guard. <laughs> I mean he's he reminds me of LeBron. I still love yeah, I LeBron. I still I'm still a big LeBron guy, but Giannis is uh when LeBron retires, Giannis is gonna take over the league. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, he's 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 just he's a bigger and almost faster LeBron. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like unfair watching sometimes. He's he's legitimately a cheat code. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous to watch him. It's also fun. And it's I, also pretty fun to watch too, though. Like I'm still yeah, a big fan is, of him. It his. is entertaining. It is entertaining to watch him. You know, fly up, grab the ball in the in in this defensive so- zone, and you know, fly up the court on a fast break. It is entertaining. <laughs> Just watching somebody that tall move that quickly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, speaking of questions that uh, we were at, we were requested to to answer. Yeah. Um, was another one from uh, Julia McDonald. Okay. Um, I don't know how you're gonna feel about this one, but it's do you have sex with socks on? I'll let you go I first. I don't. I don't get into a bed in general with socks on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like, a very good point. I think there should be like sensors on a bed, where, it's like, it doesn't let you, on the bed properly. Until you take your socks off. Socks just don't feel yeah. right in a bed, dude. Have you ever been under no, like, covers with socks on? It's the probably the most I, uncomfortable thing ever. The only time I think I can remember wearing socks to bed was probably when I was like a kid. And you know when your parents may put like the vapor rub on your feet when you have like a stuffed nose or something like that? Yeah. That would probably be the only time... I would have had socks on, and even then, even then, I was incredibly uncomfortable with them on because I hated it. Um, but like, before we even jump into like the sex part, like if you're falling asleep with socks on your feet, like why? You're waking up like, and your, your feet, feet are not... sweaty. I guarantee you. Yeah, like your feet are, your feet fucking stink. <laughs> like just take them off. Let your feet breathe. Like why are you letting your feet just sit there and stink? <laughs> Especially like in the summer, you're under your blanket sleeping, like. It's hot in your room. Like your feet get all sweaty and grimy. Take your socks like, off. Ugh. Just rip them off. Just let them breathe. And I think that answers my question. So, Julia, no, I do not, do not no. indulge in the socks. socks no, it's wearing. gonna be a no. That's a big negative for me. Um, but yeah, now that we got those questions uh, out of the way, I want to jump into uh, your question. I think I already answered qu- asked one of mine. So, go ahead with one of yours. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just uh, picking through my list here, and I kind of, this could be a a cool question, but it could also be a dud, so, um, oh, actually, how about this one? This comes in from Irish.Gallagher. Oh, no, I knew you were going to ask this one. And the... (laughs) (laughs) Actually, she had two questions. She did. So the first one is, do you like me naked or not? And the second question is, want to do live cam with me? Well, Jesus Christ. You don't think this is a scam, do you? <laughs> um, yeah, I do think it's a scam. <laughs> um, let me answer that because I've been in a happy relationship <laughs> four years no i did not want a live cam with you and no i do not like you naked 
So yeah, you're no. right. It's probably scam. No, it's probably no, scam. no. Like you know the meme. You know the meme of Michael Scott yelling no. Yeah. That's me right now. That's me <laughs> just screaming. Just screaming no, okay. no, 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 not happening. Fair, fair. Um, oh. Alrighty. <laughs> Uh, fuck that. I knew, I knew soon as I saw that, as soon as I saw that question last night and that you, and you proposed that idea, I knew that was going to be your first one to go to. <laughs> I just wanted to know. I was curious. You didn't tell me. Fuck. Um, <laughs> alrighty. Uh, da, 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 da. let me just look through my list here. Here's a good one. I'll give you a, a nice one instead of you giving me that shit <laughs> fun from christian j huntley if any NF- and if nfl playoffs are a single elimination bracket which number one seed loses first now, i'm trying to remember the number one seeds there wait, was wait, wait 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 what'd you what'd you say the question was if nhl playoffs oh nhl you said single... I think you said nfl first i was like what oh, it's sorry. all single elimination it is uh so if nhl are a sing- is a single elimination bracket which yeah. number one seed loses first so you got Boston, Washington, St. Louis, uh, and I want to go with Vegas. I think it's Colorado, isn't it? No, Colorado's second. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I might be mess. I might be messing a division. I don't think I am. No, there's four divisions. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um. Name them again. Boston, St. Louis, Vegas, Washington, Washington. Oh, that's that's kind of tough. The first one seed to lose. That is that's a difficult one. I mean, I'd have to look giving, at I'd have to look at matchups too, like who the eight seed yeah, is. Yeah, no, I'm trying to. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm trying to think of your, who your wild card team is, and the division you play in. Boston would play. I'm, Columbus first, wouldn't it? I think so, yeah. And then, I mean, it would be either Toronto or um, Tampa Bay next. Um, I think it would be... I don't think Vegas would because I think Vegas would have an easier route than all of the other teams because I think their division is the weaker one. Because I think Vegas would dummy Edmonton, <laughs> Calgary, or Vancouver in the playoffs. Okay. Like, seven-game series, I'm taking Vegas every day over those guys. But in a single limit, like, who comes out flat and who's... who? Jo- I think it's the first It's the first one seed to play Colorado, I think. Yeah, which... I mean, that could be tough because, I mean, Dallas-Colorado would play first round. Uh, who knows which way that would go. <laughs> I'm gonna All right, say... Homer. All right, Dallas Homer. Right. I would, I would go. Uh, I think, I think it'd be whoever comes across Colorado. Whichever okay. one seed comes. I'm across gonna Colorado. go. With, I hate to say it, but I think, it's, I think it'd be Washington. Really? Yeah, I just thinking of the team, the possible teams they'd have to play, because if they play the wild card team, whoever that, I think that would have been Carolina, who gave them some very a lot of difficulty last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you win that game, you're on to either Philly or Pittsburgh. Oh. And that's, that's a tough game. Oh. Well, I'm going to go with, uh, either St. Louis or Vegas. Uh, depends on who, okay. who plays Colorado first. Um, but I could make, yeah, I mean, like you just did, I could make arguments for a lot of them. You, I all four of them. I can make for all four for teams, yeah. really. So you can make an argument for every team in the playoffs. I mean, the NHL, should lose. the NHL is pretty wide open every year. That's yeah, that's what really makes that is. tough. I mean, this would be like an easier question if you're looking at, uh, uh, if you're looking at like, actually, on a number one seed. That's that's kind of tough. I was gonna say it's like way easier to to answer that question if you're looking at like NBA or uh, NFL. But I mean, the one seeds mm-hmm. coming out of there were pretty strong too. So yeah, I I agree. Um. Yeah, I mean, I got one more for you. All right. <laughs> I'm just re- reading through some of these, and, like, I could ask you, like, ten more, but I'll just give you one more. Oh, this one. 
Who is the cutest sports guy? Oh. That's coming to you from Julia K. McDonald. She gave us a lot of good questions. Cutest sports guy. I'm going to have to go hands down. Again, going Dallas Homer. Tyler Sagan. He is a handsome human being. Uh, I mean, he's got the tattoo. He's got the beard. He's got the... Got the hair, he's got everything, cars, you name it. I I think he's he's the best looking sports guy around. Okay. That's my pick. Tyler Sagan. Alright, good pick. Winner. <laughs> Listen to us, Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't know who I'd go. Maybe maybe Ovi. Who? <laughs> oh, oh. You, say, <laughs> you say you say Ovi? <laughs> I thought that might get your attention. Okay. I'm not, Ovi, all right, that's, with that's all not his my, missing teeth and not, gray hair. It's not my actual pick, dude. I don't know, I'm maybe... Say, picking a silver fox, are you? I mean, TJ Oshie's a pretty good-looking guy, too. He kind of looks like TJ Sagan. TJ Oshie, yeah, that's a good pick. It. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe without the beard. Plays for a better team. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, th- I mean, that's a good pick. I think if you're going to pick, I mean, not trying to sound weird or anything, but like, if, I think if you're going to pick a sport with, you know, best looking guys, I think it's probably going to be hockey. Yeah, second to baseball, I agree. Couple, there's, there's... <laughs> okay, we can't agree to disagree there. <laughs> um, my last song for you, our last song, Jesus Christ. Oh my God, today's been a long, long day. Last question for you. Yeah. Favorite slow song. So we're gonna we're gonna, I'm throwing you a curveball here. Favorite slow song. Oh, you're coming in with the soft shit. Yeah, we're getting soft here. We're gonna we're gonna open our hearts up and we're gonna talk about how we really feel. How slow are we talking? Are we going back to like, you know, the the like teenage years where it's like however slow you want it to be, dude. Oh, Jesus. Like, if you want to talk about your jun- a song that you liked in junior high, dancing six inches apart from a girl, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, if we... If it's a song you <laughs> like to play right now when you're down in the dumps, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, what was that one by Headley? Is it Perfect. No. <laughs> I think it was perfect. Was it perfect? No, I think it was one... perfect. Oh. Old School by Headley. Old School. Is that how is that okay. is that what it's I... called? I th- I swear to god it's perfect, dude. No, that's a different one. You know which one I'm talking about though. Yeah, perfect? but you don't know which one I'm talking about if you That was like perfect. that was like that was like the classic junior high slow dance song. No, no, you're wrong, dude. You're gonna you're gonna look him up after this. And no, no, it's old school, dude. Okay. Old school by no, Headley. I, I don't know that song. No, I'm you not, definitely do, literally. dude. Wait, wait till you look it up after this, and yeah, you know it. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely look it up. I'm gonna have to say mine. Ooh, Lee Bryce, I don't dance. That's a good tune. I think that I think that constitutes a slow song. Yeah, I'll give it to you. I That's mean, I def- thought... That'd probably be my go-to slow song. Okay, right on. I thought we were going back, like... Like you said, like the junior high dance days. But, I mean, uh, you can go back far that way, but if we want to go that way, I'll go with, like, the Hunter Hayes... What's that song? That's... Wanted. What's that Hunter Hayes song wanted. I'm trying to think of? Wanted. Wanted. Yeah. I remember at Cavi, at Cavi, I was so pissed that he was there because, like, I'm not a big Hunter Hayes guy. But soon as he started playing Wanted, I was screaming that song like the biggest Hunter Hayes fanboy <laughs> ever. Loved it. Might be, yeah. But, might be, yeah. might have something to do with the uh, the sodas before, but. Yeah, but uh, if we're going to go back that far, I'm going to have to say Hunter Hayes Wanted. <laughs> okay. Decent pick. Well, that's okay. all the questions I got for you, dude. All right. Um. Yeah, I think that that wraps up our questions uh, for today. But uh, thank you to everyone who wrote in. And uh, we'll be sure to post another one uh, 
before the next podcast. Maybe we'll keep doing it this way where we just try to throw each other off guard. Um, and even if you don't DM the, uh, the pylons Instagram, if you want to send them to me and Fulton's personal Instagram, you can do that too. Just DM us any questions you have and we'll be sure to answer them. Um, but we do have a couple reviews that, uh, people post a couple funny ones. One in particular by, uh, big sports guy, six, six, six. <laughs> the title is Haji is the man. I like where this is going. Big sports guy says, although he can't grow facial hair, which I can't <laughs> still struggling with that. Uh, Aaron is the definition of a man. I've never been one to listen to sports podcasts, but I love the soothing sounds of his voice. Great job, guys. Keep it up. Well, <laughs> thank you, big sports guy. Appreciate it. And uh, you know what? I'm working on the facial hair. I got stubbles growing, little patches every here, every, in places. And, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Define Maybe man. by the end of this. Yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> if I'm If I'm a man... Then like, that's 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 a low standard for man. <laughs> <laughs> like I wouldn't, I don't, I I personally wouldn't consider myself like a man, like a like a oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I wouldn't like consider myself that, but yeah, like I wouldn't consider myself a brute, but like I'll I'll take I'll take any compliment I can get. So you know what, big 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 sports guy thinks I'm a man, so we'll just leave it at that. Um, what was, oh, we wanted to also, before, you know, we wrap anything up or go anything else, we had a, we have a big announcement for next week, don't we? Oh, shit, yeah. Can't let that go. We, uh, we're going to have our first guest, and, uh, Fulton, I'll let you, uh, maybe give a little bit of a backstory to who we're getting next week. Yeah, so, uh, we've been in talks with this guy for, uh, for a few months now, actually, and, um... He's a longtime friend of both of ours, and he just fin- he just wrapped up his uh, five year uh, QMJHL career with the uh, Quebec Rempire and um, the uh, the Moncton Wildcats. Uh, so we're excited to announce that uh, Christian Huntley will be joining us next week on the show, and uh, we'll have a couple questions for him, and. Uh, and I'm sure I'll have a couple of stories to tell from his career in uh, in Quebec yeah. and Moncton. So, yeah, hopefully we can uh, dive into you know what it's like to live in a, with like a billet family. We can get the maybe down low on understanding what that's kind of like, and uh, maybe a day in the life of a Q player, and you know maybe get some good stories about some teammates, and. Uh, Maybe some even better stories about some on ice experiences, but uh, I think it'll be fun. Our first official guest. I'm excited to find out how he stays warm on the ice. Oh, I I already told you. If you decide to ask, I'm cutting you <laughs> off right away. I'm like I'm cutting it right then and there, and I'm telling Will to edit it out. <laughs> no no chance are you asking a hockey player how he deals with the cold. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's not happening. <laughs> All right, fine. Fuck, I'll be sick next week. Whatever. <laughs> fine, I'll do the intro. I'll do the. I'll do the interview by myself then. All right, sounds good. Alrighty. Well, uh, well, this has been uh, another another episode of Pylons with Opinions. This was episode five. Thank you to all our listeners for tuning in once again. Remember to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at Pylons Pod. You can reach us there to submit your questions. And like I said earlier, you know, if you if you want to just DM us personally, send us questions that way too. It works either way. Uh, reminder that it is staff parking only outside. All violators will be towed. And have a fantastic week, everybody.